my first thought was it had to be wrong. My second was that it was absolutely amateurish and a ludicrous tactic for an experienced coach to take. Like, how could you possibly think this could be a decent idea? Like, how was this going to work that Marner wasn't going to be put in a terrible spot? And I'll give you an example. So say I'm the rookie and the coach asks me to do this. Well, I'm telling two other rookies that I'm buddies with, hey, did you guys have to do this? He told me to ask. He asked me to do this. What do you think about it? So now three guys know about it. Then he decides to tell the veterans, so they all know about it. How is this not going to be divisive in the locker room? Like, I'm not trying to pile on here, but I just found it absurd that that Mike would have thought this was a decent idea. It's not like it's his first rodeo or the first year he was coaching. Like, Or the first a, time he's done it, Ray, by all accounts. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of stories that, you know, I, that we've all heard or – most of us have heard, however you want to phrase it, that, you know, he's not always been the easiest or the most compassionate guy to play for. I wouldn't say he's a, you know, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't take the time to connect. That's not what he's doing. He's like steamroller in a head. Uh, but there's plenty of stories about back to Detroit and, you know, that it wasn't always a, an easy place to play. Yet, they still won that year. They made it to the playoffs that year. Mitch Marner found a way to persevere through it all and develop into, you know, yeah. a truly star player. Uh, what do you think it says about Mitch Marner in particular? Well, I'll, I'll take it in two parts. One is that, you know, when you hear all coaches wear out, they're welcome. Well, not every coach does this, but this is a reason why coaches wear out their, their welcome, right? It's like after a while, the guys are like, oh, this is – ridiculous or whatever the next thing is this is ridiculous like i'm you know this this doesn't work it's goofy right like i think that's what ends up happening in some cases where you hear oh the guys tune out the message well if this is part of the message that's what they're tuning out as far as for for marner um i've always kind of felt there's a little bit of screw you to marner um where he's like yeah well I'm, I'm plowing ahead anyway. I'm going to be a star. And now, for two years, he's, he's done that. This year, you know, I mean, it hasn't been a great start. Now he's hurt for him. But um, that's my impression is like, yeah, fine. I'm, I'm playing anyway. You put me in a bad spot, but I'm playing. That, that's kind of my thought on what Marner would think about that. My whole thing in the last hour, we talked pretty depth and in depth about it, Ray, is – you know, there's a difference between having a hard coach and somebody who you still respect. That's the, you know, for, for me, I, the only person I can talk to, and I know Al Arbor, you know, he was a hard coach, but you loved Al, right? And he wasn't a guy who yeah. would do things to be disrespectful to you. Daryl Sutter is the same way, a lot of guys. But to me, these types of things cross a line where you don't like the person. You, you may not dislike the tactic, but... That's the, you know, challenge, and you that's guys, what O was bringing up. You talk about Al Arbor. You're like, you know what? He was a hard-ass man, but I love that guy. Yeah, I have sure. not heard one yeah. guy say, you know what? He was a difficult coach to play for, but I love that guy. Not one person, assistant coach, player, anyone in an organization has said, you know what? I love that Mike Babcock. I've never heard that once in my life. There, there, is, there is definitely a difference, right? Like, I, I'm sure, oh, you had coaches that, booted you in the rear end and you're like yeah i get it i, I understand why yeah but i always and, had a beer with them ray when i was done playing and we would laugh and tell a story and i'm like you know what that guy's a good guy i've never heard one person said i can't wait to have a beer with mike babcock such a good guy no one ever says that ever well <laughs> i mean I, I i can't i can't imagine too many guys are going fishing or water skiing or whatever it is or, you know, I don't know, do guys do that with their coaches these days? I don't know. But if I went to, a, um, if I went to a, an event and some of my old coaches were there, most of them I'd be really happy to see. Exactly. A few of them not so happy. Well, there's almost a too big to fail element to this. Like, he's the highest paid coach in NHL history. He's going to the Hall of Fame. 
Right. So yep. Lou Lamorello knew about this. Shanahan knew about this. Everyone knew about this specific tactic. And I think it's safe to say there were other tactics used I'm that sure. are difficult to justify. But they signed up for it, Brian. They knew that, you know what, this guy's a bad guy, but he's a good hockey Absolutely. coach. Absolutely. And there's big personalities that are making big money down there, and they need someone who's going to make it more about himself than everyone else. Well, and you know and why that's he— what they, that's what they signed up for. You know why he probably wasn't going to change at the time? He might Right now, I hope for his sake, Babcock, he reflects on this and goes, maybe I got to change some things. Right. But they gave him $50 million. Mm-hmm. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He knows it. Canada called him up twice. And they said, gave him a license to be a jerk is what they did. No, what I'm saying is, though, there was no reason for him to believe anything he ever did was the wrong tactic. No kidding. That's what I just said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they gave him a license to do whatever he wants, and it's going to be the right thing because he's Mike Babcock, and he was making $6 bucks and the coach of the Maple Leafs. That's exactly That's, what, and they got what and they, they knew paid what for. they were getting with they that. They got what they paid for. Well, I mean, the, the guy that would know best is Brendan Shanahan because he played for him. Like, other guys might have heard a story, but Shanahan was in Detroit. He was up in the lineup, down in the lineup. And he would know better than anybody else. And they decided that this was the way to move the team forward and to, and to play this fairly, like, they did move forward. But, man, this, when this story broke, and I mean, it's, when, I, when I heard it, as I said, I just found it to be amateurish and, like, an impossibility to be a positive. Like, how could that have possibly, even for a second, thought been a thought that, yeah, this is going to help the guys. Hey, player A and player B, um, our rookie, Mitch, says you're lazy. <laughs> well, when you like, put it that way, yeah, it's, maybe it wasn't the greatest idea. No. But, no, I've heard other stories where you call a player <laughs> in and say, rank your top fittest players, like fitness level, and then he would go to the other players and say, this player said this about, like, just garbage stories. Yeah, it's garbage. Just, no, it's guys complete against, garbage. It's all one and the same, right. effectively. Ray, my, my biggest concern about all this is, and it's not about being old school and keeping things in the room, but, you know, when you start to, like, I, I worry that many other stories will come out and and then you see there's other people culpable in this, if that makes sense. Because I have no problem with the way Daryl Sutter and all of the coaches I had, Al Arbor and the hard-ass coaches, with the way that they spoke or did things, conducted themselves, because there was a layer of respect involved. And I don't think they crossed the line. This one, to me, was a greasy cross the line. But I, I always, Ray, are you, do you have a problem with these stories coming out now and, you know, as the guy's exiting stage left instead of them coming to light maybe while the process was going on? Well, I guess, you know, I'll be honest with you. I never heard this story until a couple of days ago. I, I didn't, I hadn't heard it. I've heard other stories, but not this one. It's not my place to try and tap dance on somebody's grave as he, as he gets fired. Um, the reporters that knew about this, I don't know if they knew about it then or just found out about it. They have to make that decision. And for people that don't understand why they might know something and not report it right away, it's because you still have to work with the guy, the team, the players, and you wouldn't want to um, you wouldn't want to blow up your own bridge. So you might hold on to something until this point when it doesn't matter anymore. But I, I you know, I didn't know about it. Noodles. I don't know if you guys had heard about it. Um, no, I, I would, no, not this. But story. but you know what? Like that's the thing. You you hear fifty stories, which ones are true, which ones aren't. We're not we're not behind closed doors. That's the thing. I can tell. Right. We can tell our own personal experiences, but we're not in that room, and we don't know which line was crossed, or you know which story should stay in that room and not get leaked to the public. You know that's that's I guess what my point is is if if one gets leaked now maybe several will come out and. And I still think there's, if there's a layer, too many layers of people that saw Mike abusing his power, then, then there's a lot of people with blood on their hands. Not just, not just the, not just the coach. If that makes well, sense. Well, and he's still getting paid regardless. Not that that matters. And I think he'll still be hired. Right. Like I expect him to be, if he wants to coach again, Ray. I, I don't think this story is going to stop. 
might stop oh, one or two teams, maybe, but I don't think it's going to stop a, 29 other teams. It's a greasy move. No, no but what, what I think can and, and would be done is, like, it, you have to look at everything in, in the totality, right? And if you think Mike Babcock is a good coach, but he does some things that you don't like, well, this would be one of the things you would ask him about when you're interviewing him. Okay, well, why do I know? Why am I going to trust if I'm the GM? Why am I going to trust that this stuff isn't going to happen again? And he has to tell you, and then you're going to have to make that decision as the general manager. There was a time when there was enough of a backstory behind Sheldon Keefe that Kyle Dubas had to have the courage of his conviction to say, okay, I believe that he has grown past that, and I want to hire him for a significant job in the, in the OHL. Like, Kyle had to trust that. And whoever hires Mike Babcock next is going to have to trust that, oh, okay, this is something in the past. It was a goofy thing to do. It was ridiculous for him to try and pull it off, but I don't think it's a future problem. 